Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Many a True Nerd, and welcome back to Medieval 2 Total War, where we've got this lovely, lovely Middle Eastern Empire, where everything's fine, apart from the fact that the giant hordes of death are kind of, at this point, clearly heading south. We were vaguely hoping they might, like, you know, come over here and bypass us entirely, but no, we've not been that lucky, unfortunately. You, my good man, might be heading on your own to deal with Adana, who bloody knows, but, uh, yeah... They're definitely coming down here. If we're lucky, really lucky, they're at this point instead going to go down to Mosul and Baghdad and clear that out. But after that, there's literally nothing for them to do apart from coming this direction. Though actually, they could theoretically hit Damascus first, which would absolutely be hilarious. So we kind of hope that does indeed happen. We need to keep production up here. Here we go. Ballista Towers in Acre. The Citadel is done. Time for the Ballista Towers. These things, we've not seen them. We've not seen these in this playthrough yet. They will tear things apart. So I really actually hope we do get to see these in action because they are magnificent. Also, a really cool thing that I think this is unique to Scotland and Denmark. I don't know if I've actually kind of drawn attention to it yet. This is a special building that I get to build once I get up to Citadel. The Castle Library, meaning I can actually build a spies and diplomats inside my castles. I think that is Scotland and, yeah, I think it's Scotland and Denmark only to get access to that building, which is pretty darn cool, I do believe. But no, Ballista Towers is more important for the time being. We've got plenty of cities around. Honestly, like, it's an odd building because, like, you're always going to want to have as many cities as possible just for economic reasons and as few castles as possible. Apart from, like, you know, crucial choke points or, you know, the fronts in major wars are going to be long wars, but... Yeah, it's not like there's going to be a shortage of cities, and, like, cities with just basic brothels and town halls can train diplomats and spies, so it's odd that you have to wait until, like, Citadel Tech to actually get the castle library. Like, it might be useful if it unlocked, say, Fortress, maybe, but no. In fact, actually, you know what? Castle. It really ought to be a castle, but no, it just comes weirdly late. Gaza, however, yes, Gaza has Ballista Towers now. Gaza's in good shape. It could also have a castle library if it wanted to. I mean, it's cheap. It's cheap and quick to throw up, which is nice, but even so, it's, yeah, it's an odd one. Let's just actually over here retrain these guys very, very quickly indeed. Lovely, so let's just get them in some really nice partial plate, if I'm remembering correctly. So yeah, at Acre, let's just get some dismounted feudal knights going on together with, yeah, just a few more Norse archers. Because seriously, these guys, 11 and 16 on the walls in melee. They will hold the walls nicely, they will shoot down nicely, they will do a ton of damage, especially if backed up by those ballista towers. No, sorry, they're not there yet. They're being built. Acre, we are going to put up, even if we can't win, we're going to put up a hell of a fight at Acre. Sooner or later, this massive force is all going to come for Acre, and we are going to put up the most ridiculously ludicrous defense of all time. Now, uh, you guys, can you take this guy out? Okay, good, you got lucky there. You are well worthy of being promoted God to Cardinal, so. quite frankly, at 8 out of 10, so hopefully you are, because that was... Uh, that was lucky. Let's just send you over to... Hang on, what is anything needing some catharsis? Like, right now, overwhelmingly, the world must be really flipping Catholic. So you're over there, you're over there. Right, let's just send of these guys over to here, because that's not that Catholic God yet. 87%, 95%, what down here? 0%. Maybe we should build, like, you know, a small chapel. I'm surprised the Pope hasn't called me out on that one yet, given apparently this place is overwhelmingly Islamic with a little bit of orthodoxy thrown in and also a tiny bit of heresy, because why not, eh? Oh, another exciting news. I'm sending one of my spies just down here into Spain, so I'm going to figure out what the bloody hell's actually going on with the Spanish situation. I want to kind of just, you know, spy on the French settlements down here, make sure we've got eyes on what's going on on the other side of the Pyrenees. But I also just want to figure out what the bloody hell ever happened with Spain. What went wrong? I mean, I'm assuming it was a failed assault on Valencia once upon a time, but I would just like to check... I'd just like to check. So, you know what? We're going to go and have a little look with a spy and figure out what the hell went on. First order of business today, however, is uh, Dijon. Needs to go down. Dijon needs to go down because, yeah, it's just some basic crappy mercenaries. Well, I say crappy. No offense, mercenary spearmen and mercenary crossmen are really damn good. The mercenaries in this game are really, really solid additions to even proper professionalized armies. Still, let's get in here and take care of these guys nice and quick. Prince Henry. Ah, yes, of course. This is the guy who wanted me to kill his father, who's currently a little bit north of him. But no, we're going to kill him instead, because I don't like people who aren't pious. Yeah, that's a good reason. Also, he's disgusted by blood, so the morale of his troops is really low. Oh, and he's a hypochondri- Oh, no. Another minus two and minus six. You know, actually, you know what? It would almost be worth killing his father just to make this guy the King of France, because, yeah, minus two authority 
disgusted by blood. There's actually... Oh, yeah. Minus one morale from Soba. Minus two morale from Hypochondriac. Minus two morale from Disgusted by Blood. And minus two authority as well. Oh, sorry. Another two minus morale from Slave to Superstition. Another minus one authority off Ignorant. Wow, this guy is truly, truly spectacularly bad. Like, almost amazingly bad. Still, unfortunately, we want Dijon and we're kind of here now. So... We could... You know, we really could not. We could actually just say, screw it, and actually go and take out King instead. And leave France with an incredibly incompetent ruler. Hmm. Okay. Do I want to give it a go? I mean, I bet I could... Could I get around the outside? If I was to, if I was to walk away... Now, I probably couldn't make it to them next turn, but I could... There's nothing in that fleet, right? No, it's just a massive fleet with nothing in it. The forces of Mets, My Lord. they they could make it here, but they can't get in this turn, unfortunately. Well, unless, Sire. unless, 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 this guy, apparently who is now holding false documents, very, very good indeed. Yes. Could you, yeah, 88% chance of infiltrating, so that's a pretty sure thing. 50-50 chance he can get the gates open. If he can get the gates open, and meanwhile... Bloody hell, the French king is just being guarded by a flipping trebuchet and a catapult, because... Uh, see, yeah, he's really good. He's really good. We should leave Prince Henry... And he's wearing ornamental armour, making him vulnerable. Okay, this is... This is all very interesting. Yes! You know what? We're going to give it a flipping go. <laughs> Let's see if... Come on. This is a coin flip, but if it works... Then we can basically go and... Oh, but... I am a soldier of the Reich. Hmm. Hmm, this is risky. This is... Okay. Cancel the communal farming in order to fund, like, Viking raiders and peasant archers. So there's going to be something guarding this place. Right? Um, yeah, scout as well. Beautiful. Now, other than that, everyone needs to come with me. Leave one unit of peasant archers behind. Admittedly, we are now walking right into a flipping inquisitor. This is, this is dangerous territory, but screw it. I'm giving it a go because it would just strike me as hilarious to leave France crippled, not by my war, but crippled by the most incompetent leader imaginable. Zero out of ten. I mean, you've seen what zero out of ten authority did for the English. Like the force of Stephen that went rebel over there. We could do that to France. And I think um, Prince Henri is actually quite... Yeah, he's 43. He'll be around for some time yet. Oh, gosh darn it. We cannot get in. We cannot get in this turn, unfortunately. We did not get the coin flip win. Okay. Just get us some, yeah, ladders and rams to get in there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Papal States is poor. Oh, this is going to be the turn the Papal States says, no, stop attacking France. This is totally going to be the turn, and that's so flipping annoying that that's totally going to be what's going to happen. Is there nothing I can do to get... Orders, my king. No, there's no reinforcements I can get down there. I mean, in theory, I could actually just get some of the forces of Iron Einstein right now and just basically attack France and its flipping huge stone wall. I could just basically swing through and take all of it, but the Pope would be annoyed. The Pope would be very annoyed if I did that. But then, even if the Pope was annoyed, that'd be the... Hmm. Okay. This is really... Okay, I might be about to make a really stupid decision, but... In theory, how old is the Pope? The Pope right now is 60. We've seen generals die younger than 60. Okay, he's on his way out pretty soon anyway. If need be... I'm just going to very quickly train a diplomat. I'm going to train a diplomat down here at Genoa. I'm going to send a new diplomat over to have a little chat with the Pope. I think, in theory, we could buy our way back into his good graces, uh, if need be. But a massive, great three-way attack on France, utterly crippling its economy. Yeah. You know what? I think that's potentially worth a go. What do we even... I mean, I don't know what we've actually got in Paris. It might be good, because France has really good... Especially when it gets to high tier, it has really good militia units. These guys have got... Yeah. Okay, so they've got their own little kind of spear wall thing that's pretty good, but nothing too spectacular. Okay, I'm going to give it a go. 
I'm gonna give it a go. We're just oh, you can't quite make it. Boo! Boo, you bastards. You can't quite make it down there. That's really annoying. Right, I'm going to... I'm going to move these troops move to here. And I'm going to... I need to train more troops here. Like, now. Okay, sorry. We need to cancel some of the, the infrastructure. Sorry, you don't actually get the infrastructure, I promised you. Oh, I promised you a practice range, did I? Yeah, sorry. I've changed my mind. You don't get that anymore. Right, Iron Einstein now needs to be training... Yes, yes, yes. Boom. That's solid stuff right there. Good. We might well be going straight at Paris next turn. I'm not sure. We may or may not decide to do that. Oh, dear. Oh, the Pope's not going to like this. Um, do I want to? Actually, no, I've got Catapult. With double Catapult, I don't even need anything. And I am genuinely thinking, screw Dijon. I'm just going to take this army and move it up to Paris instead. <laughs> that is entirely possible. Depending on... Oh, yeah. This is going to be... This is all going to be interesting. Right, anything else I need to do this turn? Because otherwise I'm just really, really interested in what's going to happen with the Hungarian force. Because that's a good force with lots of chunky, chunky infantry. So they can just, just beat this crappy little backup force. And I really hope they can. I'd love it. I'd love it after all this effort they finally took Nuremberg. It would be the best thing. And yeah, this force over here is just another five turns till that surrenders. I think we're already building and training everything we can there. Yeah, I think we're going to have a quiet few turns. All things considered, fairly fast turns. We don't do a huge amount. So, uh, I think we're okay for the time being. Yeah. Let's see what happens next. I suspect the Pope's about to be really annoyed at me. Right. Now, France. How's France going to react to this situation? France is going to say... Well, hasn't come out to fight yet. No sallies. Every diplomat in the world, as we're familiar with. In comes a... An assassin who just made Marseille happier, which is odd. Oh no, he made it sadder again, never mind. And then we've got, yep, French spy coming in, trying to spy on Iron Einstein, that's fine. French backing off, also backing off. Probably at this point, really confused. Like, the AI, if you attack multiple cities simultaneously, sometimes gets a little bit on the confused side, so we'll see what it does. Oh, okay, this is where things get interesting. Now, what the heck, are they going to try, is that army outside going to try and attack the army besieging Nuremberg? And is any other force going to try and rush up and deal with this? Or are they just going to bumble around here? Not sure what to do. Because generally the forces initially get a bit stuck and they don't really react well to the rest of the Empire. Because they don't really like seeming to cross Venetian territory. Yep, desperately bringing in reinforcements. Tiny bit from Frankfurt. But I don't think it's enough. I don't think it's even nearly enough. Oh, wait. I think I just forgot to move the troops north from Lasagne II. Oh, I might regret that. There's a bunch of troops in Lasagne the second that need to be moved up to Moscow because we've got Russians incoming. And I may have just forgotten to do that, which might work out very badly for me. Wait, what? Okay, they're not going for Moscow. They're going further south. Okay, that's weird. The Turks, meanwhile, are... Well, I'm honestly not sure what the Turks are planning to do, really. <laughs> There's no real sign of, like, you know, an organised, sensible response to the Mongols. They're just kind of accepting it and letting it happen. England, meanwhile, okay, so England have lost a lot of land to me now, including their economic heart and their production heart. What exactly are they planning to do at this point, aside from just throw a bunch of armies together and sort of hope? There's their fleet, but it doesn't have anything to do. It unloaded, ah, maybe out of spies, I'm not sure, actually. Uh, you're heading over there. Fine. Ah, they're trying to loop around to get to uh, London, perhaps, bypassing Nottingham. If so, I can get down to London. Sorry, get down to Milton Keynes from Nottingham very, very quickly indeed. Polish and all the Polish have not done anything for so long. I feel like almost we should just make peace with them because me and them at this point, well, after we've taken Sarkel, of course, uh, me and them, we haven't really done anything to each other for quite some time. They've just kind of, you know, hung out near their capital and moved generals around, but... There's been no sign of aggression for quite some time. I say this as some troops move north vaguely towards my territory. Not fond of that one little flipping bet. Ah, Hungary. Here we go. Here are the heroes of the hour. Please, please do it. Come on. Pull it off. Pull it off, you magnificent bastards. Having a chat to Poland. Moving around diplomats. Moving around more diplomats. Oh, you teasers. Just get on with it. Moving around a princess in the middle of nowhere near Kiev for no one explained to it. Here we go. No! No, you bastards! Oh, you were so close! 
That is the second failed siege of Nuremberg. But I think it was the third siege of Vienna. No, no, it was way after the third siege of Vienna. It was like the fifth or sixth siege of Vienna that they finally, finally were able to... I think that guy's just flipping lost against Innsbruck as well. Right, merge all these forces together. Go and do it again. They're badly blooded. You can do this. Please, Hungary, I believe in you. Papal States. Okay, walking away from my general. Walking away from my general. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Walking towards a different general. No! No, 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 no. I think that's the guy who's not actually that holy at all. Oh, you poor thing. I think you're only like three out of ten. I suspect my general's about to be tried for heresy and probably convicted because he is not a pious man at all. Oh, no. Wait, hang on. I didn't just hear it. He might be okay. He just might be okay. Well, I have to say about that. If he is, then we need to execute that guy as soon as possible. And now... Uh-oh. Okay, the Mongol horde is slightly repositioned again. Now they're swinging down towards me, or rather down towards Odessa and through Odessa, rather than, rather than down towards the remaining Turkish territories. That's not good. Yeah, now they're definitely heading more in my direction than the Turkish direction. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, the Mongols are... Ah, Magdeburg, St. John's Minor Chapter House. Yep, that will do very nicely, thank you. And no, I think he survived. He survived being interrogated. Marvellous. Cardinals has been promoted. Ah, one of mine. Oh, yeah, the exact guy I was saying. The guy who successfully killed this guy down here immediately got promoted to Cardinal. Very, very nice indeed. And Sicily and England are now allied. Well, of course, the two bastards are allied. Well, actually, no offense. From my point of view, literally everyone's a bastard. We have got ourselves a priest in Damascus has passed away. Uh, Grim Sorensen, bit of prestige engineer, nothing major. And yes, found innocent at trial. Accused of foul acts of heresy. It would appear the man's ways are pure enough to spare him from being found guilty of heresy. Nice and... Hang on. The Pope has not insisted I stop attacking France. Oh yes. Oh yes. You are lucky. You're only four out of flipping ten. Actually, I think it goes up. Because, yeah, having been tried for heresy, this man is now more careful to follow the mandate properly. So he was 3 out of 10. It goes up to 4 out of 10 as a result. Now, 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 now. Actually, first, large city bridge. To oh, flipping hell, Milan. We could do without that right now. That's okay. Come back to that. Come back to that later. We may or may not want to do that. Good result overall. The things are looking fine. Toulouse to France, agents executed. Yeah, all fine. Now, Danish assassin, can you take down this guy? 66% chance of taking out this Inquisitor who is dangerous and attacking my guys. Give it a go. It's the old snake in the bed trick. Except for some reason it's it's harder despite the fact that the guy's asleep. Maybe it's harder because like, you need to get past his guards or something. I don't know. This looks good. This looks promising. There we go. Wizard down. Beautiful. Beautiful. And you've become Master Assassin. Nice. So he's now up to... Yeah. He's now getting there. 7 out of 10. Very, very nice indeed. So, we've got an Inquisitor down. That's good. Now, at some point, can you go and take out... Where did the other guy go? He was up here. 63% chance on that guy. Okay, but... On the plus side, that's two Inquisitors down. Like, we let it get out of hand. There were way too many... There's already a spy Sorry. here. Okay, fine. We should probably just use this spy to go and investigate what's going on in Spain rather than sending this one out of the way. This guy can yes. just kind of stay around here just in case we do need to see what's going on in terms of Bordeaux because Bordeaux is it's a fortress and that's, uh, yeah, that's a citadel. We really would like to take that one because, yeah, that's producing good quality stuff and swordsman's guild there. Totally fine. Right. So, we know what we need to do now, rather weirdly. We need to get over into this territory and take out the faction leader because the factioner of France has specifically asked us to do said thing. So go on then. I'm nothing if not helpful to the French. Me and the French get on just fine. Just ask Claire. Oh, now, now you open the bloody doors. All right, fine. Whatever, you stupid bastard. Right. Need to take out King Michael the Malevolent together with, yeah, just some siege equipment. Basically, yeah, his useless son has asked me to kill a really damn good faction. We're not brilliant, but perfect politician is good, espionage, faction leader, respected, 
prim, budding bureaucrat. Yeah, you know what? This is a good, competent leader, and I'm going to replace him with a totally bloody useless one. This is a really, really good thing. I'm basically doing what France says. I'm going to get paid. I'm going to potentially be able to stop the war with France, and I'm going to let France completely tear itself apart at the hands of a totally incompetent leader. This is going to be beautiful. Let's do this. Right, nothing too major here. Pretty standard assault. They've got literally nothing that can stand on the walls. So as a result, yeah, I can basically just go and take the walls nice and quick and easy. Honestly, I doubt anyone will even bother guarding them. Start the battle. Actually, yeah, of course, the gates are open anyway, so I can just literally run out to the gates if I want to. Now, that's actually potentially useful. What's going on inside the gate? Ah, just a flipping... Wait, where's the... Okay, there's the leader. Is he going to immediately run back to the plaza because the gate is down? Because <laughs> he might do, you know. I'm just going to put that down and uh, we're just going to send you over in this direction. Because you are mercenary spearmen. So therefore, okay, just stay back for the time being actually. Because if he's going back to the plaza right now, and I suspect he is, then in that case, all I want to do is go and pick off the other bits. Yeah, go and pick off the other bits, fine. Everyone else, put down your stuff, put down your stuff. You, get in there, you, get in there, you, get in there, you, put down that thing and get in there. Let's just go and take out these guys, and then we can take out the leader later. So there we are, we can basically just run straight through the gates. We might have the odd tower to take care of, but it shouldn't be a big deal. If we pick our time to engage, it'll be fine. Scouts heading in first, lovely light cavalry. And the gate's open for us, thanks to our spy. And now, yeah, back over here. Now, what's he going to do? And what are they all going to do? Because if he turns around, I'm just going to basically draw up my mercenary spearman right there. And he'll just walk straight to them. And he'll probably win, because he's got a lot of horses. But it will do a lot of damage to him. Right. Everyone over there. Everyone over there. And then everyone else just prepare. But I don't think anything else is going to happen. Let's just get you guys up front. Right, I'm going to pull my scouts back because I don't really want them taking damage because it's not really their job to be involved in frontline combat. So that's fine. So you guys just get back over here. My general, meanwhile, can get around the back of these guys and just push straight through them because they've got crappy knives. They won't be able to hurt him. So he can just basically push straight through, probably. I mean, where's the actual, where's the actual general? Just make sure he doesn't get stuck somewhere, otherwise that could be a little bit annoying. This guy's probably going to end up getting killed, and that guy's just going to do, like, donuts for the rest of time. But that's fine. That's fine. Everything's okay. You guys just drop over there. Is that going to be the... No, that's not the king there. That's just one guy who's got himself separated apart. Beautiful. And then at the back, just check, you're not the king. No, you're not the king either. Right. Get in there. These guys are wavering. Just get them, no, you, get in there. Just get them surrounded. Because if they're wavering, as soon as they're surrounded, they'll break. Then we can just whack them down nice and quick. Lovely. Yeah, one of them's broken. And if one of them's broken, the other one will break momentarily. It does generally happen in pairs. Wavering and gone. Get on them. Finish off the trebuchet. First trebuchet we've even seen in the entire game, I believe. Well, we know the Mongols have them, but uh, this is the first one we've actually seen in the battlefield. They are beautiful. The animation they do when they launch is really beautiful. We just haven't had the occasion. Like, siege equipment is odd in this game in terms of, like, artillery. Because, like, as you've seen, you can walk up to, like, a fortress with a single ballista and knock down the gates really reliably. So... There's kind of limited points to actually bothering with trebuchets. Like, they're really fun and they're nice to have, but let's be honest, they're not necessary. They are in no way necessary. I'm going to have my infantry just start walking in this direction, ready to start shooting that guy later. Bring up my archers too, and make sure fire at will is off. And also just have the scouts moving. Actually, you know what? The scouts wouldn't actually help that much. They can just stay at the back. Now, time to do the old classic split and... That's not where I just told you to go. I want you to go. There you go. I want you to go over here. Over there, please. Uh, and the archers go over here. And then, no. No, that's that's not even remotely what I told you to do. But you've sort of got it now. So as long as you don't accidentally trigger these guys to charge, that's fine. Right. So now we've got a lovely little kind of claw ready to close in. Attack the general's bodyguard, please. I mean, these archers are going to do nothing to him. This is going to just very lightly pepper him. But it should hopefully draw him forward. It will get his attention. He'll move over here. 
hopefully, straight into the Mercenary Spearman. Like, when he comes under fire, he'll go into the spread out position to make himself a worse target. But after the first guy dies, he should actually start moving in this direction. They managed to take a surprisingly large amount of time, though, because basic archers, their arrows just bounce off heavy cavalry. Actually, they've definitely started dying. They have most definitely started dying, but they're not charging. Which is odd, but you know what? I don't care. Maybe it's because they literally they can't pathfind to the archers, therefore they're not charging. But generally, I would assume they would just charge at the same. Okay. And the enemy king is slain. Oh, it was the king. I was right to call him the king that time. He was actually the king. Beautiful. King Mick... What is it? King Michael, King King Michel or Michiel or something. He's dead anyway. Uh, yeah, because unfortunately because he was hypochondriac, therefore he had less hit points than everyone else. So it only took like a couple of arrows to bring him down. So he's dead now. So that's good. Right, guys, let's do this nice and fancy like flaming arrows, please. Flaming arrows, let's see the people as they die. There we go, catches fire. And two more catch fire. And about three or four catch fire. And two people catch fire. Crispy, crispy French people. Lovely. And hilariously, this is actually going to happen. I'm going to finish this siege, take this city, kill the king, and the new French king is going to reward me for it. He's going to reward me. He's going to give me 5,000 florins and a big thank you, and me and France are going to like each other better, because I just killed a really good king and let a really terrible one take his place. And I'm literally out of arrows with 12 heavy cavalry remaining. So, Spearman, get in there. This is kind of your job. And we'll just also have everyone... Okay, I technically just won, but no, we're killing these guys. I want these guys dead, all right? We're actually kind of, you know, we're giving him an honorable death. He's already dead, but if anyone asked, we can, like, you know, say, oh, no, he died in the final Valiant last stand. Absolutely, that's what happened. And in come the spearmen, and in come the Viking raiders, and in come the other lads too, and yeah, they've already got very, very few hit points left because we've been peppering them with arrows. These guys are going to go down super fast. And then round the back of the final few, boom, in we go, and whack them with axes, and they just start collapsing so, so fast. Beautiful. Last... Is that the last one already? Yeah, they're going down super fast now. There might be another horse somewhere, but if there is, I can't see him. Yep, last one. Give him a stab, someone. That's right, just keep poking him with pointy sticks. And down he goes. Actually, technically, we haven't even won then, because I believe there's still... There's one fleeing person who's trapped inside their own siege equipment over here. So maybe we just say that's good enough now. All civilized peoples will be awed by the victory we have won here today. Particularly the French, who for some reason wants us to do this, but fine. We've lost 10 men, killed 142, including heavy cavalry. Very, very good indeed. Now, time to get our reward from the French. Down he goes. We get your city and... Okay, hang on. My... Wait, what? The mission was to kill your father! This... Okay, fine. Apparently it only counts if he was assassinated. <laughs> okay. So I didn't actually succeed in the mission there because I killed him in the wrong way. Well, that's just a shame. Alright, fine. Whatever. You know what? I'm taking 15,000 florins worth of stuff from your city and more and more French territory belongs to me. Now... You, my good man, just became the king. The useless, useless, unpious, zero authority king. Completely, utterly hopeless. And I'd say that's the way we actually want to keep it. Also, just check anything going on here. Dread plus two. Proven commander. Very good. Papal states are still not thrilled. And yeah, that mission has expired. Okay. I guess the mission must have been to deal with that purely by assassin. Right. Yes, we are indeed leaving that guy be. And we're going over here. We're going to slap a watchtower down. And yeah, now, whoa. Our territory is looking really, really weird. But I'm leaving him. I'm leaving him be. Do you know what? Next turn, this army's probably going to flipping... Oh, no, wait, hang on. You're the you're the factionary and you're relatively loyal. Fine, you're okay. But like any army you've got wandering around by itself has an excellent chance of just basically wandering off and breaking, just like we saw with the English. Like, this guy is an albatross around France's neck. 
it would be stupid of me to kill him. Not least he as, yeah, then next in line is, well, we don't know anything like about him, but he's probably better, quite frankly. So, I'd say we just leave him be. Just leave him be, let him bring down France from the inside, kind of by accident. Yes. Now, 29,000 florins, who wants some expensive stuff? Because everyone who wants expensive stuff can have expensive stuff. Also, the tax rate's going up here. Uh, the mines, how good- okay, that's good enough mining for me to increase the mining there, beautiful. Mets, you can have your communal farming back, I think I took that off you. Peasant twerp, you can have- uh, Okay, apparently you don't have a town guard yet. You can have a town guard. You know what? Fair enough. You're probably overdue for that. Magdeburg, I think, just became a fortress for the first time. So actually gets paved roads. Very, very nice indeed. Stettin, you can also become a fortress because I'm just feeling generous and spendy today. Now, let's get my spy close by to that Russian army. What are we looking at here? Basically, it's a lot of cavalry, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a lot of cavalry. So basically, if I just get some, including some really damaged units, if I just get some solid, chunky infantry on the field, that's it. It can't stand up to that. No chance. In fact, actually, this army has basically very little way of actually going into my settlements. Fine, it can knock down the doors with the ballista, but after it does it, we'll need to go inside with cavalry. And ultimately, cavalry, uh, well, I can just basically use large amounts of, well, militia spearmen. Defense, what is that? Nine with the... Yeah, defense nine with the silver tier armor. Okay, let's get some extra defense down here. Let's get some armies moving north here. And let's leave behind light cavalry, at least one unit, because that's not going to help that much. We'll just send these guys further north. Basically, all I want is... Uh, yeah, some nice, chunky... But still... Yeah, okay, that'll do. That'll do. Some extra troops there. Just in case things get dicey in that part of the world, that's okay. Sarko's still four turns from doing anything. Mongols slowly coming in this direction. Antioch is... Ah, Antioch is done with its roads as well. <laughs> Making excellent money. 1,200 already. Oh, the slide just hanging out here. Fine. Uh, town halls, brothels. Don't need any of that. Basic grain exchange just gives me a new merchant. I'm not sure I'm even at the merchant camp right now. I've not been really kind of dealing with merchants a huge amount. Um... City Watch. Crossbow Militia wouldn't be the worst thing to be able to train here. Probably best, however, to just... It's 12,000... Yeah, 12,000 is next. So, could go for land clearance. You know what? Let's just give them some basic stuff here. Happy stuff to make sure we can actually tax them more effectively. Because, yeah, that's 600's worth, like, an extra rank of taxation. So, that'll pay for itself inside a few turns and extra taxes. So, that's fine. Jerusalem! Could also have Ballista Towers. You know what? It's sensible. It's sensible for Jerusalem to have ballista towers. Gaza's got that already. Could have an armory. An armory that gets me... Ah, yes. These proper professionalised spear wall troops. Wouldn't be the stupidest idea in the world at all to have them. No, not at all. Although, you could also have a master armourer for full plate. Which would be kind of hilarious. No, let's go for the armory here. Rather than the master armorer, let's go for the armory. We've actually got, yeah, the most advanced troops. It would be useful to have that available as an option. Fine. Get that in production. Also, just get me some more Norse archers, because Norse archers are pretty good. Actually, two, and we'll retrain this guy. Let's get his bodyguard properly kitted out as well. And over here at Acre, sure, let's just get ourselves another two Norse archers, because, yeah, basically, when the Mongols do actually get close, I just want as many flipping Norse archers everywhere. Norse archers, on the cities where I'm not actually planning to hold out, I'm just planning to play for time and soften up the armies, Norse archers will be the force that holds the line, and they will do a damn good job, I assure you. 19 florins left in the bank, dear oh flipping dear, but yeah... This force isn't doing anything, the Moors aren't doing anything. I feel like I've broken a large part of their strength. You're not going anywhere this turn. We've taken out the... You have taken out that guy, and the new French king is beyond useless. Which is marvellous. But, there is a competent force heading south. However, if that competent force were to decide... And by the way, I should totally... Oh no, I literally, I literally cannot afford to go outside and set up a watchtower. <laughs> nope, I don't have money for that even. If these guys decide, hey, we're just going to skip Nottingham and swing by this route to Milton Keynes, well then my army, a small part of it, could just head over, take York. Right now, York is very poorly defended. Then I'd have a land border with Scotland, but 
If I just properly fortified York, surely they wouldn't be stupid enough to attack me. Surely not. Well, you know what? It's Total War AI. Sometimes they like starting wars. And hey, I like starting wars too. So me and Total War get on just fine in that regard. Now, in terms of the Paris situation, however, Prince armor. Charles has yeah, okay but not spectacular force. Paris has some crossbow militia and armoured sergeants. Probably the best thing you can do is just go right around the outside of Paris and join up with these guys. Because these guys could do with some reinforcements because they're getting weaker. Some of these units need just breaking up. Actually, you know what? Don't. Because if I take Paris, I'll have the chance to repair them all. And speaking of which, um, you my good man, Spy, Expert Agent... 88% chance of getting into Paris. Get in there. Over you go. Lovely. And have you just also improved again? Yes, indeed. You have become a spy, which is a marvellous trait for a spy to have, but they need to work at it, apparently. Right. Six out of ten. Huge stone walls. Ooh, Thieves Guild headquarters. Large There's literally only allowed to be one of those on the map. So if you are the first faction to get a Thieves Guild headquarters, no one else gets it. And it does have really nice global benefits. So having that off France would be good. Having a siege work so I can actually just train trebuchet, that'd be good. Though admittedly, it's turn 87. So uh, not to spoil, but something's going to happen at some point pretty soon that means trebuchets are going to lose their appeal. But it's still nice to have. Militia Drill Square would be a nice thing to have. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff here. We should just move in and take this. And we do actually have a 56% chance of opening the gates. Ah, you know what? I should have actually just taken these guys over here. But then if it hadn't worked, then they would have been taken out by Prince Charles or forced to retreat. So it's better they join up with the main force here, I'd say. Just. Right, you know what? That's good enough for the time being, I would say. There's a crappy assassin there, but don't worry about him. He's not going to be killing anyone time soon. He's too bloody useless. Yeah. Next turn, the Paris attack. But in the meantime, quite frankly, it would not surprise me to see French armies starting to go rogue immediately. Because with zero fraternal authority king, yeah, you know what? France is so screwed, even if I don't do anything to them at this point. Now, France, what are you going to do? Assassins and diplomats, fine, lovely, bumbling around... Nothing too remarkable there. Happens constantly. Still going to have a chat with Scotland. Possibly just got on a boat, in fact. I think the uh, the French are shipping their diplomat from uh, from Scotland home. So apparently his job is done. Well, technically he has done his job. Uh, France and Scotland are allies, so maybe that was his job. And he has indeed succeeded. Next up, come on. And yeah, totally they've got a spy inside Marseille. Fine. Not to be worried about, really. There's their cardinal. I should probably assassinate him. Get him out of the way, because I don't want France having cardinals. The Pope is getting worryingly old. Too old. If the Pope dies, I'm concerned right now I do not control the balance of power. In terms of, yeah, the, um, the vote. In which case, the safest thing to do might be to back a Venetian Pope. Me and Venice get on fine, and I'll have backed him. So, if there was a vote tomorrow... I might well choose to do that and actually back a Pope that's not even my nationality. Just because, you know, he'll still like me because I've backed him and we're allies. And that's good enough, quite frankly. Though it would put me in an odd position if Venice decided to attack me. The Pope would definitely side with Venice on that one, even if they were the aggressors. Right, more flipping Imperials coming in. That's probably the entire garrison of Innsbruck. Imperials are kind of actually retaliating and you just walked into my territory. Excuse me. You're not supposed to be there. All right, seriously. I've had so many opportunities to take Stalfin off you, and I haven't. So let's just flipping behave, all right? Oh, the Byzantines are flipping back again. <laughs> they really, really, really want that Turkish capital down. But I think the Turks haven't had their go yet. So we'll see if they decide to retaliate. And yes, indeed, uh, not too surprising. The Russians have, despite some slightly confusing actions earlier, decided that they do indeed wish to put Moscow under siege. That's fine. Bare minimum I can get to the uh, get to the walls to help out next turn. Honestly, I might just let them come to me. I might just move my armies into a position to reinforce and then let them attack. Because, quite frankly, they've got barely any actual infantry, so they're going to really struggle. And with only um, ballista rather than catapults, they're not going to be able to take down the walls. They can basically just open up the gate 
and then they'll just have to have all their cavalry run straight into, like, four Skiltrums. So, at that point, they will basically take huge amounts of damage for no reason, and then the reinforcements can come in and mop whatever's left. Ah, the Turks are indeed retaliating, but... Don't dare attack. Okay, that's interesting. So it looks like that's actually going to go down to an actual city siege, but that's fine. That does give the advantage to the Turks, given, yeah, there's always a big defender's advantage. England, ah, is this actually the plan? No, there's some form of, like, rebel army you need to take out. Fine, and there they are again, presumably now defeated. Potentially another spy dropped off, not sure. Poland continue Operation Bumble around doing literally nothing of value. And to think they were once one of the most powerful factions in the world. Now they are just kings of bumbling. And there's that army, just hanging out there forever. <laughs> Never doing anything productive. And there goes another one. They've just got so many generals and nothing to do. I think I just kind of, uh... I just kind of took a bunch of their cities, but I think I must have taken the cities that just didn't have generals in them. Or possibly the game when they had loads of territories, gifted them a load of generals and they all had loads of children. Then they lost half their territory. So now, like, all these children have come of age and, oh, Hungary. Come on, Hungary. Get back in there. You've got a good army. You can do this. You can still do it. I believe in you. But no, don't negotiate. Don't flipping negotiate for peace. Goodness sake. Come on, you've got the troops. You can win this one. Actually, you know what? That's a decent Imperial army. You really need to just get it focused on moving over towards Nuremberg. Yeah, assassins. Oh, they are. And oh dear. Oh, very much dear. Right, you guys need to make sure you've got a decent force at Vienna. Oh, this could turn around horribly. If that Imperial force starts to push forward... Oh, no good. There's reinforcements coming in here. And that's a really stupid way to get to Innsbruck, but whatever. Okay, now I'm really interested in what's going to come out next. Like, the Pope's been weirdly not angry at me. Like, he really should have, like, forbidden me from waging war against other Catholics by now. But for some reason, he's being really bloody nice about that today. And I'm not sure why, but it's kind of weird. And what the bloody hell, Mongols? What the blood? Okay, now they're going back north again. Oh, dear. The Mongols, ladies and gentlemen. Right, um... Yeah, they're kind of marching now as if they are going back into Turkey. They're literally retreating from where they were before, so... All right, fine. Go for it, it's fine. Agent detected in Venice. Oh dear, Venice. Now, what do you want me to do? Oh, you want me to kill that guy a flipping gen? Okay, fine. I will kill that guy at some point, all right? I promise. Other than that cardinal report we've got ourselves... Aha! We've replaced one of the Venetian cardinals. Perfect. abso flipping perfect. England, Portugal no longer at war. Good, they should never have been in the first place. Uh, Ingrid died, whoever she is. I'm sure that's incredibly sad. Someone's probably sad about it. Uh, Aleppo can be upgraded. Ah, perfect. That's just what I wanted. Fortress, which will definitely be ready in time for the Mongols to arrive. If the Mongols are planning to arrive, who bloody knows. Right, Moscow is now under siege. Sarkel's still three more turns to go over there. This force can make it over here. Very, very nice indeed. Now, am I actually allowed to attack these guys immediately? Because... Do I want to? Okay. Yeah. I've got 1,151 men. Honestly, I think we just let them come. And then we basically trap them in the city and wipe them out. Because there's nothing, nothing they can do to me. Not a chance. Well, actually, you know what? He's willing to offer battle, because otherwise he would have already backed off. Hmm. Okay. This force... This force, with four sets of Norse archers, backed up with the... Yeah, backed up with the, I think it's four or no, six spear militia from inside the city... I think we could just basically walk over to these guys and just start pelting them, pretty much. I mean, they've got the... They've got the ballista. I don't have spearmen, though. But equally, they've got... They've got so little... Yeah, you know what? Screw it. The flipping dismounted Huskars can handle it by themselves. Let's just go and do this now. Right. Draw you guys up like that. Archers safely nestled at the back. And in come the reinforcements. Now, if they want to come at me, they're more than welcome to give it a go. If they don't, I'm willing to wait for my spear militia to show up because the spear militia will just provide some really nice bonus anti-cavalry strength. 
And it looks like they are indeed vaguely interested in moving a bit forward at least. I'm definitely seeing forward movement there. So we'll just bring those guys in. All of you should probably be running just in case. Let's just slow this down a bit here. And yeah, everyone just hold still there. And just fire at these bastards as they come in. These are just, yeah, horse archers. But horse archers and we've still got some good archers of our own firing at them from the back. They've got close enough to be hitting our Norse archers. I'm just going to bring some scouts out. Because I imagine they're in skirmish mode so we can just chase them off. Those are four boyer sons. So let's just quickly get these scouts over here. Just to basically chase and murder them. Because I believe they are slower than scouts are. Right, you round here as well. Let's just get on top of you. You're going to die very, very quickly indeed. Yep, there we are, though, you know, due respect to them, they are flipping eager. Now we've got, no, you guys should really get back. That was, that was way too aggressive. That was way too aggressive, way too aggressive. Wait, maybe run. Maybe flipping run. There we go. Right. So their leader is now charged forward. I need to get my guys. You've broken, which doesn't flipping help. Right, okay, just get you guys out of... Get you guys out of here. Okay, this isn't going so well, actually. Actually, light cavalry. You know what? Screw it. Get on them. Stop firing your bows. Get in there, please. Thank you. Because you can totally get on top of them. You can get on top of them. You guys, get in the back of them. Good. The spears just showed up. The spears have arrived in the flipping nick of time. So now we've got spearmen. Spearmen. You know what? Go. Go go and just get on them please get on them get into all of this we've got plenty of spear militia get into them get in there go on you round there you lot round here good i'm glad we've got the spear militia this is why do the fights in russia always turn out to be harder than i think they're going to be how are you doing by the way you need to get out of there i don't want my leader dying that's too bad for morale just kind of get yourself out of there if you can right you are now surrounded, and you're surrounded by spears and spears. That's just flipping light cavalry, so that's fine. These two are just getting around the back here. You two just fire down onto them and whatever. Right, you guys, get around here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And get around the back of them. And get into that. Right, you continue around the back. You're just firing over there. You take them out. You take them out. I want you around the back of over here. And the general's bodyguard, one of the two, is backing off. We've got a break over there, but we've almost got them surrounded. So what exactly is breaking over there? It's one of ours. Oh, we've got more breaks. This is a concern, but we've got plenty of strength here still. You over there, hold fast. Take these guys out. There's not much flipping left, but chunky, chunky, heavy cavalry. This is going surprisingly poorly, actually, but you know what? Even if we lose this, even if we lose, get on them. Just get in there and fight. Get in there and fight. Norse archers will still do marvellously, marvellously good work. My leader, get round over that side. Okay, just rally, rally people, rally people, please. Okay, that's going to be a turning point, I feel, with the enemy king lying dead. There's going to be, yep, one of you's broken fighting to the death. You're now breaking. Okay, good. That's it. We're going to win this one, but blimey, it's closer than it should have been. Really closer than it should have been. Fine. So, those guys have been chased off. Let's just get the ballista out of the way as well. And now just get some spears down there on those horse archers. And if you can, everyone, get over there and just start shooting those guys, please, with your arrows. Thank you very much indeed. There's still... Ah, there's still technically something going on over here. The ballista is actually fighting... I think they ran out of bolts. So those guys will hopefully waver momentarily. Yep, they're wavering. Now, go for it. These guys, are you actually willing to charge? No, they're not willing to charge yet, but that's fine. And you guys are now taking on Ballista, which is a little bit on the dangerous side. We've only killed one of the two, by the way. There's still, I believe this guy still has a general's bodyguard. So let's just take him out if we can. There we are. You just get on them, lovely. Where is it? I think there still might be a general inside that group. You just get over there. Take on these guys if you can at all. And you... They've broken. Right, get after him. Get after him with the scouts. 
Seriously, just kill him if you can, because I suspect there might still be a general in that number. No, continue the battle. Do not give up just yet. And don't get caught up on a ballista. You stupid bastards. Just ride down their bloody other general. I want both of them dead. Right, they've broken as well. Just get after them if they can. Who do we have here? Is there actually a general in this number or is this the... I don't see one, unfortunately. I think this might not. I think that might be the one who's already gone down. I think the other general might have already made a run for it. So, unfortunate. Yeah, I suspect, unfortunately, it's this general over here who's still got it. Yep, there he was. Fine. So, he's going to get away. That's a shame. So, one of them got away. One of them didn't. Whew, that was nasty. Don't underestimate heavy cavalry. That was nasty, I thought, especially with a hundred general. Yeah, I should have really realised that, yeah, 100 units of heavy cavalry, generous bodyguard, that counts for a lot. Anyway, that'll do. All civilised peoples will be awed by the victory we have won here today. We literally lost, like, over twice what they did, but whatever you say, narrator man. But you know what? They're being executed. Screw those guys, they don't get to- Ooh, and despite just executing a whole bunch of people, he is apparently chivalrous. He did it, like, chivalrously, with his own hands or something. Yes, you know what? You can be our new glorious leader. Huzzah! You've got ridiculous hair as well. Marvellous. Welcome aboard, Ulf Thornum. Good, good man there. Good man. Right, the Russia situation is under control for the time being. It's going to be a hell of a long time before they threaten us again, because now they've got literally nothing but this crappy little force here, and then indeed what they've got left here, which is... The faction leader himself and a whole bunch of just basic crappy peasants and archers. He honestly can't afford much else. So, uh, and yeah, that is actually a castle. And I doubt he can afford to ever upgrade it to a fortress, even though he has the population for it. So, he's stuck with basic crappy units. Probably we're not going to see a proper Russian army again this entire game. That was pretty much the last thing they were capable of putting together. So, that's, that's promising. That's good. But, well... Despite the fact apparently we've got some very temporary relief from the Mongols, good, more time for us to build up Aleppo into a fortress, train Norse archers, and potentially get our money's worth out of Antioch before it's inevitably sacked, we've still got issues, in particular in Europe. France is, well, you know what, I'm just going to enjoy watching France now. This very turn, I think we are ready to basically move and take Paris, and the Pope, for whatever reason, seems to have no interest in getting in our way, which is absolutely magnificent news, because then, yeah... With Paris gone, shouldn't we just leave Dijon standing indefinitely and the crappy, crappy king who lives there? We can just basically pick apart France and if they try to bring around small reinforcing armies, they're going to go rogue. Like this guy right here, loyalty is only 5 out of 10 and that's a small army. This guy could go rogue any second with an authority 0 out of 10 king, which is marvellously good news. We will also continue our investigation of what the bloody hell's actually going on in Spain and, well... Possibly, you know, if I had to guess, I'm going to say this force that's standing right outside Valencia, that's probably the army they started the game with, right there. They probably started the game with that army, and this army has attempted to take Valencia as a rebel settlement, like, multiple times, failed repeatedly, and now the French have come in and taken it, they just don't know what to do anymore. So they just spend their day standing there, several centuries after they were first deployed, probably, you know, too ashamed to go back and tell their flipping descendants that they failed. So... I'm going to guess that is indeed what happened, but I will send my spy around. We'll learn what happened in Spain, figure out what we can there. Together with starting to have some thoughts about whether it's time to start completely ignoring the Pope, because the Pope is getting old. Old and liable to die from old age, or Who is my potentially from being assassinated. So if I wanted to potentially just ignore the Pope for, say, five or ten turns, and go on a bit of a land grab basically clear out the entirety of France, clear out England, clear out the French territories, make all of that mine. That's certainly something we could consider. That's something worth having a little think about. We shall see about that, and all of that is coming soon, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Medieval 2 Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Wait, did people just vote out democracy? Hang on, what have you just done? Oh, go on, let's have the greatest Oktoberfest ever. Yay! Spain and Russia have announced a new alliance as a result of the warmongering of certain Central European countries. Oh, well, excuse me! My leader from now on, no weeklings will stand in the way of this country's path to glory. Oh, God, Germany, not again!